Greetings everyone. My name is Advet Simon and today we are going to learn the topic motion in 1D. So before we start this topic, we have to understand the meaning of this topic motion in 1D. So we'll take it word by word. First is motion. There are basically two terms, rest and motion. Rest and motion. When a body does not changes its position with respect to surrounding, it is termed as rest. But when a body changes its position with respect to surrounding, it is termed as motion. I'll repeat it again. When a body does not changes its position with respect to surrounding, it is termed as rest. When a body changes its position with respect to surrounding, it is termed as motion. And now the other thing is one dimension. Uh, when a body moves in a straight line path, it is termed as one dimension. It can be vertical and it can be horizontal. Uh, the best example I can give is a car moving in a straight path is the example of one dimension. So now we have understood the meaning of the topic that is motion in 1D. So now we'll move to the next topic. And before starting that topic, there are two terms you should know about. First is scalar quantity and the second one is vector quantity. Scalar quantity and second one is vector quantity. The quantity which has only magnitude is termed as scalar quantity. Only magnitude is termed as scalar quantity whereas a quantity which has magnitude as well as direction magnitude as well as direction is known as vector quantities. I'll repeat it again. Scalar is a quantity which has only magnitude whereas vector is a quantity which has magnitude as well as direction. Now we'll move to the next topic which is distance and displacement. Now I'll write distance distance and this placement distance and displacement. Uh, we can define distance as the path or the length covered or traveled by a body. Distance can be defined as a path or the length traveled by a body. Whereas displacement is defined as the shortest distance between initial and the final point. Displacement is defined as the shortest distance between initial and final point. This can be understood better with the help of a diagram. So I'm drawing a diagram. This is position A and position B. If a person travels from position A to B in this path and the other person travels like this and a third person travel this. So there are three different paths from position A to position B and these all these three paths are considered as distance because distance says that a, a length traveled by any body. So these three are different length traveled by a body but only this one the middle one is considered as displacement 
as well as distance also because this is distance also uh, because displacement says that the shortest distance between initial and the final point so this is the shortest you cannot draw any other line or any other path which is shorter than this one so this is the shortest path between a and b that is why this is displacement as well as distance and there are three different differences uh, major differences i would say there are three major differences between distance and displacement we are going to study all three differences so the first major difference between distance and displacement is distance is either equal or greater than displacement the first major difference between distance and displacement is distance is equal or greater than displacement that means in other words displacement can be equal to distance or it is shorter than this uh, distance displacement can never be greater than distance hope you understood the first point i'll repeat it again distance is equal distance is equal or greater than displacement distance can never be shorter than displacement now we'll move to the second point the second point says that the second point says that distance is always positive and this displacement can be negative it says distance is always positive and displacement can be negative this can be understood with the help of this diagram suppose i have taken a position a and a person travels from a to b and then from b to c a person travels from a to c a to b and then comes back to position c suppose distance between a and b is 10 cm suppose the distance between a and b is 10 cm and the distance between b and c is 3 cm the distance between a and b is 10 cm and distance between b and c is 3 cm now if we have to find the total distance the total distance will be adding these two like a c b and then to c so the total distance will be 13 cm but if we talk about displacement the uh, displacement says that it is the shortest distance between initial and final point so the initial point is a and the final point is c so the shortest distance would be this one this is the shortest distance so now we have to find this one so now we have to subtract this from this so this becomes negative this this distance becomes negative this is how uh, we can explain that displacement can be negative but distance can never be negative now we'll move to the third point we'll move to the third point the third point says that there are situations or conditions when displacement is zero but displacement uh, displacement is zero but distance is not zero this can also be explained with the help of the diagram suppose this is position a a body moves from a to b then from b to c then from c to d then again to its initial position a and suppose the distance between this is 2 this is 2 this is 2 and this is 
Now, if we talk about distance, we'll add all these twos, all these numbers, like from A to B2, this two, this two, and this two. This is how we'll get the total distance. But if we talk about displacement, um, remember the definition of displacement. It is the shortest distance from initial to final point. And the, our initial point is A and final point is also A. So the shortest distance will be zero. When initial and final point are same, that means uh, the displacement is zero. So this is the example which shows that distance is not zero but displacement is zero hope you understood the topics that we have learned today see you in the next class